Digoxin side effects. My name is Dave. I'm a pharmacist. And buckle up, buttercup. We're going on a ride with flowers. Digoxin comes from the flowering plant foxglove from the plant genus Digitalis. All parts of this plant are poisonous. Don't be afraid, though. We can monitor you. It's an aerotherapeutic index drug. What does that mean? The difference between a dose that will produce a therapeutic failure in a dose that will produce life-threatening toxicity is very tiny. So we're aiming for this narrow little window to derive some therapeutic benefit. And the window varies from one person to another. So it's a real art to get it right. What are the effects of digoxin? Two major effects. One, increased force of contraction. So the heart will beat stronger. Number two, decreased heart rate. So it slows down, slows down the heart. What is the probability of side effects? One in five people on digoxin will report side effects. In that world of people who report side effects, 50% of them report different types of cardiac toxicity. And then the other 50% are divided between central nervous system toxicity and gastrointestinal disturbances. Specifically, here's what I'm talking about. So cardiac toxicity, bradycardia, tachycardia, that's like a slow heart rate or a fast heart rate, and then AV block, and last but not least, ventricular arrhythmias. Now, that's listed in order of most common to least common, and that's a good thing because ventricular arrhythmias are potentially deadly. So we don't want to experience that. But we can see these things at the top, bradycardia, tachycardia, those are less dangerous. For that reason, you want to monitor your heart rate and your blood pressure every day and record it. And the reason for that is if you detect bradycardia or tachycardia, you can report that to your doctor early on before the cardiac toxicity progresses and becomes something worse like AV block or ventricular arrhythmia. Moving on, central nervous system toxicity. Side effects include headache, weakness, dizziness, apathy, confusion, depression, anxiety, delirium, and hallucinations. Once again, in order roughly of frequency. So headache occurs relatively commonly. Hallucinations are relatively rare, fortunately. Last but not least, gastrointestinal disturbances. We have diarrhea, nausea and vomiting. Those are common. Abdominal pain, much less common. And then the really rare things are intestinal ischemia and intestinal hemorrhagic necrosis. Both of those are very nasty, but also fortunately very rare with digoxin. So now we get to talk about digoxin toxicity. I mentioned that life-threatening toxicity. That's what this is about. About 1 in 25, at most, will experience digoxin toxicity while taking digoxin. Uh, best case scenario, about 1 in 100, about 1%. But I, I like to go over worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, 1 in 25. What are the typical symptoms? The most common symptom is nausea and vomiting. Also, yellow-green color disturbances or a halo effect. Cardiovascular symptoms like arrhythmias, dizziness, and fatigue. Now, elderly people may only have nonspecific symptoms like dizziness and fatigue, so it's harder to detect in them based on clinical assessment. But you can measure the digoxin level in the blood, and when that level is greater than 2.0 nanograms per milliliter, as specified in the box there on the bottom right, that indicates that the patient is more likely to have digoxin toxicity. The therapeutic range for this drug is 0.5 to 2.0 nanograms per milliliter. All right, this is a painting by Vincent van Gogh. You probably have seen it many times. It's called Starry Night, and the stars and the moon had this kind of yellow-green halo effect, right? So the theory is possibly Van Gogh had digoxin toxicity when he painted this picture. And this theory is supported by another painting that he did 
of his uh, personal physician. It's a portrait. And you'll see that in front of this man is a cup or a, a pot, perhaps, that contains a plant. And that, my friends, is foxglove. So what factors predispose an individual to digoxin toxicity? So these are the things that if you have these things, your risk of developing digoxin toxicity is much higher than the average person. So the first three things are electrolyte abnormalities. And for that reason, if you're taking this drug, the doctor needs to check your electrolytes periodically. Uh, so low potassium, low magnesium, and or high calcium, all of those things could make it more likely that you would have toxicity when you take digoxin. Also impaired kidney function because the kidneys are responsible for eliminating digoxin from the body um, and low body weight. Now those last two things, impaired kidney function and low body weight, we see that a lot in elderly people. So naturally elder, elderly people are more likely to develop digoxin toxicity. How much more likely? Uh, you'll see here, the risk of digoxin toxicity is stratified by age. And those greater than 40, about a 1% risk. Those greater than 85, more than a 3% risk. So more than a tripling of the risk. Can we treat digoxin toxicity? Yeah, you have to get to the hospital. Um, if you have bradycardia or heart block, we can either do atropine and or pacemaker, uh, ventricular arrhythmias, lidocaine and phenytoin can be given. If the person has overdosed a great deal, then there's an antidote. It's called digoxin immune FAB uh, antibody fragments. Those are 80 to 90% effective in reversing digoxin toxicity. Also hyperkalemia, which is high potassium levels in the blood. We can give glucose and insulin to take care of that. Uh, so when treated promptly, the outcomes are good, but delays in treatment can lead to death. Now, there are many drug interactions with digoxin. There's too many to list. So what I have here are, you know, the things that we have access to without a prescription that are relatively common, like over-the-counter antacids, ibuprofen, supplements like ginseng, quercetin, ashwagandha, and also bran fiber. If you're eating a lot of bran fiber around the same time you're taking your dose of digoxin, the digoxin absorption will be impaired to a great degree. So your, your digoxin levels are probably going to go down. So those are just some examples. Now, each one of these things affects digoxin in different ways. And the important thing is you have to let your doctor and your pharmacist know everything you're taking. Over-the-counter medications, herbal supplements, they need to know about it. That's all. I'm just going to tell you about a book and a course that I'm working on right now for people who have had an ablation for atrial fibrillation or supraventricular tachycardia, and they want to minimize to the greatest extent possible the risk of developing another arrhythmia later on down the road. And this is going to be coming out very soon. Um, I'm almost done with it, honestly. Uh, if you are interested, please subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I will be posting a video when that content is available. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.